Let me tell you something about this girl. She is unbelievable. I was new here and she befriended me, no questions asked. They'll make you laugh, they'll make you cry, and they'll show you the power of friendship. We are going to sit in giant teacups and spin round and round in circles until we puke. Are you on crack? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 female movie BFFs. Stop thanking me. It just means a lot letting me stay with you. I want you to know you are definitely getting a thank you note. Don't worry. For this list, we're looking at big screen besties that are exclusively female. However, we're not including blood relatives. Sorry, Haley and Annie. Fair warning, there are some spoilers ahead. Number 10, Jess Bamra and Jules Paxton. Bend it like Beckham. But we've got a summer tournament coming up. You should come along, have a trial. A trial? I think I'm good enough. Jules is an English tomboy and Jess the daughter of traditional Punjabi Sikh immigrants. But they're united by their love of soccer. Jess joins Jules' team and turns out to be a great player. But getting to the finals isn't so easy. Jess's parents think that girls and sports don't mix. And the championship game is on her sister's wedding day. You let her leave her sister's wedding to go to a football match. Meanwhile, Jules' mom also thinks that the girls are in love with each other when they're actually both crushing on their coach. You bitch! As the big game and big day get closer, Jules and Jess put aside their differences for a common goal, literally. In the end, and with some help from Jess's male friend and gay bestie Tony, the girls reconcile family, friendship, and following their dreams. Number 9. Elle Woods and Paulette Bonafente, Legally Blonde So what's this Vivian got that you don't have? Three tits? <sighs> She's from Connecticut. She belongs to a stupid country club. Some of the best friendships involve polar opposites, and on the surface, Elle and Paulette couldn't be more different. Elle is a glamorous blonde and determined law student, while Paulette is a crude and friendly manicurist. Is this the only interaction you two have ever had? No. Sometimes I say okay instead of fine. <laughs> <laughs> but they soon find out they're not so different after all. Both of them have gone through bad breakups and want to prove themselves. Elle to her stuck-up classmates and Paulette to her sleazy ex. I'm taking the dog, dumbass. They bring out the best in each other and the confidence that they can do anything they set their minds to, whether it's finding love, making the grade, or perfecting the bend and snap. Well, almost. Bend and snap! Good job! Number 8. Elise, Brenda, and Annie, The First Wives Club. I work out every day, I watch my diet, mm. I have not had uh, plastic surgery. Well, good for you. You look terrific. Oh, come on. At least you're lying through your caps. This trio and a woman named Cynthia were best friends in college and went their separate ways after graduation. Over 20 years later, Elise, Brenda, and Annie reunite after Cynthia commits suicide. As it turns out, the four friends all had husbands who left them for younger women. I mean, if all the first wives of the world got together, yeah. what else do we need? Just one amazing attorney. No, no, all we need is us, three women who aren't afraid to fight, oh, to stand up for our oh. dignity. For the three survivors, it's payback time. As their plan moves forward, they dig more and more dirt on their exes including some pretty serious crimes. But revenge isn't as sweet as they thought, and the scheme threatens to tear them apart. We oh, shut up, you are next sex kid. Oh, shut up, Morty's girl. Mom, all you care about Morty's 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 Eventually, Elise, Brenda, and Annie realize that justice is much better than revenge and use their plan for the greater good. Please don't make her mad. No, 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 this is not a revenge thing. This is about justice. Number seven, Dylan Sanders, Natalie Cook, and Alex Monday, Charlie's Angels. It's not enough that these BFFs are beautiful and smart. They're also badass private investigators. Dylan, Natalie, and Alex may be on a mission to find stolen voice recognition software, but that doesn't mean they can't have fun along the way. Being PIs often puts the trio in dangerous situations, and their work-life balance isn't the easiest to manage. Still, using a unique combination of sexy disguises, martial arts, tech savvy, and a hint of woman's intuition, the angels get the job done. No matter where their assignments take them, one thing's for sure, through it all, they're in it together.
Number 6. Romy White and Michelle Weinberger. Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. Remember the prom? You got so thin by then. Oh, I know. I was so lucky getting mono. That was like the best diet ever. Ugh. It's been 10 years since high school. While they're still the best of friends, Romy and Michelle are single, unemployed, and want to make something of themselves. Now that I'm looking at this, uh -huh. our lives don't seem as impressive as I thought. Especially since their high school reunion is coming up, and they've got a ton of classmates to impress. That includes their former bully, Christy Masters, the preppy leader of the A group. What are you up to? Oh, okay, um, I invented post-its. Romy and Michelle decide to try and reinvent themselves, and claim that they created post-its. But this lie causes problems from the start, and the two argue before they even get to the reunion. I let you have the idea so you won't feel so bad that I'm cuter. You are not cuter, Michelle. I am so cuter. It's like common knowledge, Romy. Everybody thinks so. I'm the Mary and you're the Rhoda. Realizing that the truth is better than their crumbling facade, they patch things up and finally stand up to Christy. After all, just like post-its, true friends stick together. What the hell is your problem, Christy? Why are you always such a nasty bitch? Number 5. Annie Walker and Lillian Donovan, Bridesmaids We hung out. It wasn't like a big deal. And you know what? It was fun. Ew, you had sex with him. We had a, an adult sleepover. Annie is lovesick and strapped for cash after her bakery closed. At least she has her BFF Lillian's wedding to look forward to. And you'll be my maid of honor. God, of course. <laughs> of course I will! But the road to the big day isn't exactly smooth. Her fellow bridesmaids are an eclectic bunch, and she and the snooty Helen, wife of the groom's boss, don't get along. Oh, oh, I Worse, her in-flight meltdown cancels Lillian's bachelorette party in Vegas. And another outburst costs Annie her place in the bridal party. Why can't you just be happy for me and then go home and talk behind my back later like a normal person? As her personal life and friendship with Lillian fall apart, Annie learns to take responsibility for her actions, not only for her own good, but also for her best friend too. If Helen had anything to do with this wedding, it is going to be perfect and tasteful. Yeah. Number 4. Cher Horowitz and Dion Davenport, Clueless. Did you get your report card? Yeah, I'm toast. How'd you do? Ugh, I totally choked. My father is gonna go ballistic on me. Sure, they're rich, pretty, and popular. But these fashionistas have their problems too. Relationship woes, low grades, and poor driving skills are just part of their daily lives. <laughs> Luckily, they always have each other to lean on, and not just for advice. What's wrong with me? Nothing. Maybe he really was tired. I suppose it was meant to be. I mean, he does dress better than I do. What would I bring to the relationship? The besties are spoiled, yet kind girls who want to do good deeds. These include setting up two lonely teachers and taking the tragically unhip tie under their wing. It is one thing to spark up a doobie and get laced at parties, but it is quite another to be fried all day. Do you see the distinction? Yeah. But as the movie title suggests, Cher is totally clueless. When her plans don't work out the way she'd hope, at least she has Dee to bring her back down to earth, and vice versa. Not a total Betty, but a vast improvement. Well, we did our best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got a book if we're gonna make it to P.E. Number 3. Cece Bloom and Hilary Whitney, Beaches. Want a drag? A drag? You know, a drag on my cigarette. It'll calm your nerves. In 1958, child star Cece and heiress Hillary meet by chance under the boardwalk of the beach. They might be from different backgrounds, but they quickly become friends and keep in touch throughout the years. Hillary becomes a high-powered lawyer, and Cece finally makes it on Broadway. But they struggle to balance their careers and personal lives. It doesn't help that they've also always been secretly jealous of each other. I'm living the life you didn't have the courage for, so don't give me you're not jealous. You're so jealous you can hardly breathe. Eventually, the woman realized the importance of their friendship especially when single mom Hillary needs a heart transplant. Sadly, Hillary passes away, and Cece adopts her young daughter. Even though their story doesn't have a happy ending, Cece and Hillary prove that through thick and thin, best friends are never too far away. It's really been a great summer. We have had some laughs, haven't we? Number 2. Carmen, Tibby, Bridget, and Lena. The sisterhood of the traveling pants. What's so great about an old pair of jeans? Uh, nothing. They they just happen to mysteriously fit us all perfectly. These girls have been friends for as long as they can remember. This summer is the first they'll be spending apart, but as would any other besties, they promise to keep in touch. Not only through letters, but also through a pair of jeans that fit each girl like a glove. I use Lena! Lena! Are you serious? You have a body. Lena Caligaris has a body! 
Daddy! Each friend wears the jeans for the same period of time, writes what happens while wearing the jeans, and then sends them off to the next girl. Over the next few months, Carmen, Tibby, Bridget, and Lena will face many problems, including forbidden love, loss, and dysfunctional families. He's an alcoholic. But no matter what life throws at them, and no matter where they are, they're forever united in this special sisterhood. To the pants, and the sisterhood, and this moment, and the rest of our lives. Together and apart. Before we get to our number one movie BFFs, here are some honorable mentions. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I was harsh, and I, I don't know what else there is to say. Will you come on my cable show? Forget it. My brother's an idiot. You're a sister. You don't see him like I do. Yeah, and that's a good thing, because that would be a crime. I'm not suspending you. I'm firing you. What? Well, if she's fired, I quit. Me too. Fine. Hey. Oh, Oh my god, look, the Satanists are leaving. Hey, we should follow them. Oh, totally have to. Number one, Thelma Dickinson and Louise Sawyer. Thelma and Louise. Louise, uh, will you take care of this gun? Bored with their daily routine, these gal pals set out on a road trip and let loose. Their fun is cut short after Louise kills Thelma's attempted rapist. Oh my god. Get the car. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thelma wants to go to the police but Louise convinces her to go on the run, fearing murder charges. They plan on fleeing to Mexico and face a series of challenges along the way. None of this is okay. I mean, what am I gonna do for money? This forces Thelma and Louise way out of their comfort zones, but it also strengthens their relationship. As the FBI closes in on them, the daring duo must make the choice of a lifetime, surrender or sacrifice. I guess everything from here on is gonna be pretty shitty. Unbearable, I imagine. Thelma and Louise are not only our top BFFs, they're also two of the most influential ladies in movie history. Let's keep going. What do you mean? Go! Do you agree with our list? Who are your favorite movie girlfriends? <laughs> we said, okay, Danny, if you want to be between us, you can come to Michelle's house on Friday night and we'll be waiting. Tiny came over and we're like, Danny, it was a joke. I know, and then we turned the sprinklers on it. <laughs> For more friendly top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. How can you stand all these assholes? Some people are okay, but mostly I just feel like poisoning everybody.